particular tape. But here is what it's, then what happens is he goes behind a car. There's a man who is who's throwing things at him and chasing him. You hear some shouting and then he he fires. Right. According to The New York Times, while he's being pursued, an unknown gunman fires the first shot into the air. Rittenhouse turns toward the sound of the gunfire as another pursuer lunges toward him. He then fires four times with his assault rifle and appears to shoot the man in the head. Okay, so this is all disturbing footage, so you have been warned. Uh, here, is the, here is the tape. You can see Rittenhouse being pursued by this guy, chasing him. He throws something. It's not a Molotov cocktail, by the way. It's a, it's a bag filled with something. Okay, and then there's a slight delay. And then you see the shots go off. Okay, now at this point, at this point... It's unclear why Rittenhouse was being chased, why he was in the area of this car dealership. It's about four blocks away from the one that he was originally protecting. Okay, the, the initial shot were fired by three more shots in the parking lot. We don't know who fired them. Rittenhouse then takes out his phone and he makes a phone call. He calls 911 to both turn himself in because somebody has been shot, right? You can see him there on the cell phone. And he's calling. He's calling the cops to come. And then people start chasing him again. So people start chasing him again, which brings us to tape number two. Now, he's running away from a mob that is attempting to do him harm. How do we know they're attempting to do him harm? Because he falls down and one of them shouts, get his ass. At which point, a man jumps on him with a skateboard and tries to club him with the skateboard. At this point, Rittenhouse shoots the guy who's trying to club him with the skateboard. And there's another man who's approaching him with the pistol. Now, we don't know if this guy with the pistol is the one who originally fired the shot in the air at the, at the incident a minute and a half earlier. Okay, and here is what... It looked like when he shot two other people, one of these guys died. He was running toward the police, by the way, to turn himself in. Right? This is what he was doing. Okay, so you can see, this guy, this guy hits him from behind. Here are people chasing him. You can see, he's pushed from behind, and he falls, he falls down on the ground. He turns around, and a guy tries to jump on him with the skateboard. There's two, several people trying to jump on him. He shoots one of them, and then another guy has a gun, and he shoots him in the arm. The guy who shot in the arm does have a pistol. There are pictures of him. Half his arm is gone, because this is what happens when you get hit close range by a bullet. And then he's trying to surrender. The cops don't actually know what's going on at this point, so they drive past him. So people have been using this as, why didn't they arrest him? Because they don't know what's going on yet. He's with his hands up. That's why they don't arrest him. Like, why didn't they shoot him? They shot Jacob Blake because he wasn't going for a knife against the cops. That would be the reason, guys. Trevor Noah, idiot, was like, oh, well, Jacob Blake got shot. Why didn't they shoot this guy? Because he literally was not pointing a gun at them. That would be the reason. By the way, lots of criminals don't get shot by the cops. And the people pointed out that, that the shooter in, Char in, uh, in Charleston, the, the, the horrible racist shooting of the terrorist attack on the black church in Charleston, that shooter was, was captured alive by the cops. Right, because he didn't try to shoot the cops. The, the Washington, D.C. snipers were also captured alive by the cops. They were black because they weren't trying to shoot the cops. Okay, in any case, he ends up being arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Based on this tape, it's going to be very difficult to sustain a first-degree murder conviction. Like, extremely difficult. He, there's no evidence, according to the senator from Connecticut, calls him a deranged white supremacist. No evidence of that. Also, there is no evidence that he was out there to shoot people. Right? He's literally running away from people in both of these tapes. The only way you get a first-degree murder conviction is if he was threatening somebody with the gun before somebody tried to jump him or something. And we don't have evidence of that. So who are the people who are actually shot? And, you know, doing the reporting that the mainstream media will not do. The, the first guy who was shot, the one who died. And there's a Daily Caller reporter on scene who took off his shirt, tried to turn and cut the guy's head. The guy died anyway. The, the media, by the way, really downplayed the fact that there was a right wing reporter trying to help a, a protester slash rioter slash looter who was threatening the, uh, the teen shooter. His name was Joseph Rosenbaum. He was 36. Video allegedly showed him chasing the teen shooter and throwing something at him. And then. He kind of ducks behind a car before the shooting actually happens. He was a registered sex offender for a sex crime involving a minor. You can also see him on tape a little bit earlier in the night threatening people. And uh, so it seems like um, maybe the aggressor here in the original iteration might not have been Kyle Rittenhouse. Here is the tape of this guy. This is, what, minutes before the actual shooting? <laughs> him there he's in the red shirt and he is saying the n-word he is saying the n-word at that point uh it ends with an a in his in his iteration okay and this is the person who ended up being shot apparently uh, so that is that is one person the second person who was shot is a person named anthony huber shot and killed he was filmed chasing down the teen and hitting him when he was on the ground with the skateboard he has a criminal history including charges of battery and repeat domestic abuse 
And the third person who was shot and survived is a person named Gage Grosskreutz, who is 26, a member of the People's Revolution Movement. He was filmed chasing after the teen with a pistol and was shot at close range in the upper arm. And uh, he has a criminal record as well, including being intoxicated and armed with a gun. So there are all your facts, all of your facts, most of which you will not receive from the mainstream media, except for that one late breaking but good thorough report from The New York Times. So the story you've been told is that this kid was a deranged white supremacist militia member who went out looking for blood. There is little to no evidence that that is the case. It's going to be very difficult to sustain a first degree murder charge against this person. Now, meanwhile, the the danger levels were rising in Kenosha, Wisconsin. There's tape of one of the people who is one of the rioters and looters encouraging the BLM crowd to head on off to people's homes and harass them at their homes and businesses, which is always a great look. Let's go over where the police are, where the man is. You know, th th that's the that's the line here. So we're going to go over into peaceful civilian areas and uh, and create chaos. So that, that's always a great look. So how did the media cover all of this? So the media have been downplaying rioting and looting. They've been saying that it's a myth. It's, it's something in your imagination for a long time. Did the media change their minds when it turns out that it is not only not a myth, Americans are worried about it? Of course not. This is an actual Chiron that appeared on CNN last night. It was so insane. I thought it had to be Photoshopped when I first saw it last night. So there's a segment CNN aired. They had a reporter on the ground. This is not the reporter's fault. He didn't write the Chiron. And in this segment, you can see literally things burning behind the reporter. So here is the reporter in Kenosha, Wisconsin. You're going to hear him talk. The Chiron underneath. Literally things are burning in the background. You can, sit, you can see cars, businesses burning in the background. The Chiron from CNN. Your most trusted name in news. Your media who are actively rooting for rioting and looting and justifying rioting and looting and excusing it and proclaiming that anyone who opposes rioting and looting is opposed to black lives and all of this bull crap. Okay, here is CNN's Chiron. I'm going to read it to you. Okay, you ready? Fiery, but mostly peaceful protests after police shooting. Fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. So here's what we've got from the media. He had a knife, but otherwise unarmed. And fiery, but mostly peaceful protests after police shooting. They think you're a moron. They think you're an actual moron. You're looking at tape of crap burning in the background. And the Chiron, I don't know who wrote, like, who the hell wrote, did, did, the, did the rioters write the, the Chiron? Apparently, fiery but mostly peaceful protests. Yes, in the Titanic voyage, as my friend Bridge of Phetasy says, the Titanic voyage was watery but mostly, mostly safe.